Hey everyone, welcome to Structure Pro. In this video we're going to go over thin walled pressure vessels. So we're going to do a derivation, but firstly, what are thin walled pressure vessels, or as I like to say, TWPVs? So firstly, the reason we're looking at them is because they have plane stress, and that kind of makes them simpler for us, so that's why we look at them. There's three types, cylindrical, spherical, and a combination of them. So here's some examples, maybe a can of pop, but only if it's shaken, right? That's how we get the pressure in there. Maybe a basketball, or maybe, more commonly, a propane tank. So, yeah, you know, those big sausages you see, propane tanks. Aerosol cans as well, hot water tanks, fire extinguishers. Well, really? How thin do we need these to be to be considered thin walled pressure vessels? The guideline is we want our inside radius divided by a thickness to be greater than 10. And this will ensure that we have less than 5% error. So to just draw out the plane stress element here, from the cylindrical case, we have the sigma 1 or the hoop stress going around the pressure vessel and then the longitudinal stress going along it. And they're both tensile and they're both principal. So these are important observations to make. So here on the top right, we have a cylindrical cutout of, um, of a pressure vessel. And it's plain stress because the outside is a free surface, right? So let's derive this equation for sigma 1, or what's known as the hoop stress, or the circumferential stress, okay? So we have the radius, the thickness, and we'll, t we'll call the distance along this slice delta y. So we have these two shaded areas here, the blue and the red, and we can find the area of them pretty easily. The area of the blue is delta y 2r, and the area of the red, since there's two of them, is 2t delta y. The blue is the area that the pressure p is pushing on inwards, and the red is the area that sigma 1, the hoop stress, is, is being activated to counteract that. So sigma 1, hoop stress, and the two are equal just because the sum of the forces in the x direction has to be zero. So we can draw out, um, we can write out this equation, sigma 1, 2t delta y equals delta y 2r p. We end up with sigma 1 equals p r over t. So let's make some observations here. Because the outside is a free surface, we've assumed a plane stress condition. But we know that the inside, there actually is a third stress, sigma 3, and that is equal to the, the pressure in the vessel, P. But we note that because we've said R over T must be greater than 10, and sigma 1 is P scaled up by R over T, we know that sigma 1 is going to be minimum 10 times larger than P, or sigma 3. That's how we are able to neglect sigma 3 and just assume a plane stress condition. Okay, so moving along, now that we have sigma 1 figured out, let's work on sigma 2, longitudinal stress. All right, so we have two more shapes here, another blue and red. We can figure out the areas of these easy enough as well. So the blue is just pi r squared and because it's half of a circle, divide by 2. And the red is pi d, or pi 2r, over 2 times the thickness. And we see again that, that, that the pressure p is acting on the blue surface, and that sigma 1, the longitudinal stress, is counteracting that. So the two must be equal because of some of the forces in the y direction this time. So if we write in our equations, sigma 2 times pi 2r t over 2 is equal to p pi r squared over 2. Things cancel out and oddly enough we end up with something quite similar to what we had last time. In fact it's half the value. Sigma 2 is p r over 2t. So it's sigma 1 divided by 2. So this means, and we'll draw it out here just to clear it up in our heads, that the longitudinal stress along the cylindrical thin walled pressure vessel is half of the hoop stress or the circumferential stress. That also means that joints running longitudinally must be two times stronger than the hoop joints if we consider the normal forces trying to pull those joints apart. And the question arises, what about a spherical thin-walled pressure vessel? Because that was the other type that we had, right? And then of course the combinations. 
So we'd find that it would be the exact same derivation as we just did for sigma 2, and it would apply to any orientation around the sphere. And you can do that yourselves if you want, but you'll see. You'll see it pretty quick. It's the same thing. So you have sigma 2 in both directions in a sphere. And I have to apologize. I've just been speeding through all this stuff. So if you need to take a sec, pause it, feel free to do that. It's probably a good idea. And it, it is frankly always a good idea to have a, a pad of paper lying around and to attempt to do some of these things yourselves. And then we'll do them together and you can press play on the video that way. As usual, questions, comments, corrections, put them down below. So at this point, I actually have a question for you guys and I want you to answer in the comments. The question is, since we have sigma 2 on both principal stresses for a sphere, what is the Mohr circle radius for a spherical thin-walled pressure vessel? So you can draw that out and figure out, you know, what that looks like. Explore that. And yeah, tell me what the radius is. And after that, tell me what that means, the value you find, what that means for the shear stress and what the value of the maximum shear stress might be in a spherical thin-walled pressure vessel. All right, and if you don't want to put it in the comments, at least think about it because it's an interesting question. So we're going to answer that question together for the case of the cylindrical thin-walled pressure vessel. So there's just two equations to remember. So thin-walled pressure vessels are not too, uh, they don't take up too much mind space, so you may as well learn it. We got sigma 1, the one with the cool name, hoop stress, and then we got sigma 2, the longitudinal stress, which is both of them for, for the case of the spherical thin-walled pressure vessel. And the hoop stress is also called the circumferential stress. You could call it the ball and stress if you want. Anything to do with hoops, really. And so, yeah, let's draw here the Mohr's circle for cylindrical thin-walled pressure vessels. We know that sigma min is half of sigma max, PR over 2T. And we're actually easily able to find sigma average, which is 0.75 PR over T, and the maximum shear stress, 0.25 PR over T. So I would recommend doing some examples as usual. It's always the best way to learn it. So thanks for watching. Keep working hard. No shortcuts, right? No shortcuts for structure pros.